Welcome to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson I'm going to explain the concept of atomic mass and how we calculate those masses that are found on the periodic table. The atomic mass is an experimental number determined from all of the naturally occurring isotopes. So as we saw in a previous lesson, there are multiple isotopes or variations of an element. For example, hydrogen is not all the same kind of isotope. There is hydrogen 1, that's one variation. There's an isotope called hydrogen 2. And there's even tiny amounts of naturally occurring hydrogen 3. So these are all isotopes of hydrogen, and they're all naturally occurring. So this number down here, this is the atomic mass. So this is an experimental number that is the average of the mass of the hydrogen 1, the hydrogen 2, and the hydrogen 3 together. Now the units on all of these atomic masses that are listed here are AMU. And that stands for Atomic Mass Units. So what is an atomic mass unit? Well, that is based off the isotope carbon-12. So carbon-12 was chosen as the basis for the periodic table and the masses. So it's been defined to be exactly 12 atomic mass units. So all of the other masses on the periodic table are relative to carbon-12 isotope being exactly 12. Well, in that case, you might wonder, why isn't carbon-12 exactly 12 then? Well, again, this number is the average of all of the naturally occurring isotopes. Carbon is carbon-12. There's a little bit of carbon-13 naturally occurring, and there's super trace amounts of carbon-14. So when you average the carbon-12, the carbon-13, and the carbon-14, it averages out to be 12.01. So the way we would calculate that is we're going to take the sum. Remember, this is the symbol for sum. It's the sum of the relative abundance of that isotope times the mass of that isotope, plus the abundance of the next naturally occurring isotope, plus the mass of that isotope, etc. So if we had two different isotopes, I would take the abundance times the mass plus the abundance times the mass for both isotopes. If I had three, I would do that three times. So I'll show you how that works here with an example from neon. So neon has three naturally occurring isotopes. It has neon 20, neon 21, and neon 22. So this number, remember, is the mass number. Now, as you might recall again from our lesson on isotopes, the mass number is the number of protons added together with the number of neutrons. So the mass number is not the same as the atomic mass, which is just exactly that. It is the mass if you were to weigh an isotope of neon 20. So neon 20 has 20 protons and neutrons, but if you were to weigh it, it would have a mass of 19.9924 AMU, atomic mass units. So the mass number and the atomic mass are not the same. So again, there are three different isotopes. Now you notice though, they are not all of equal abundance. So it's not one third neon 20, one third neon 21, and one third neon 22. They contain different percentages of abundance. So because they're different, we can't just use a simple average where I add all three up and divide by three. I have to use what's called a weighted average. And that's the thing that I was showing you in that calculation back here. So I'm gonna take the sum of the abundance of the first isotope times the mass of the first isotope, plus the abundance of the second isotope times the mass of the second isotope, etc. So let's just try this for neon. So the abundance of the first isotope is 90.48%. As you might recall from your lessons in math, whenever you use a percentage in a calculation, you have to convert it back to its decimal form. So we've got to move the decimal two places. So 90.48% as a decimal is 0 0.9048. So I'm going to take the abundance of isotope 1 times the mass of isotope 1, which was 19.9924 atomic mass units. Okay, plus the abundance of the second isotope. So 0.27%, again, to get it into a decimal, I have to move that twice. So I'm going to get 0 0.0027 times the abundance of its isotope, which is 
So 20.9938 atomic mass units. And then the abundance of the third one, well, 9.25%, when you convert that to decimal form, is 0 0.0925 times the mass of its isotope, which is 21.9914 atomic mass units. Okay, well, now we just go through and multiply these out. So 0 0.9048 times 19.9924. Okay, well this number has four significant digits. This number has six, so our answer should have four. But you might recall though from our lesson on significant digit calculations, since we're doing multiple operations, we're gonna multiply them then add them. We do wanna keep at least one extra. So instead of just keeping four, I'm gonna go ahead and keep five, and that'll give us a more precise answer. I'm going to keep that fifth, but mark the fourth one to remind me it should really end right here. How about on this one? Well, this is two significant digits times six. So I should really keep two. But again, I know I'm doing another operation after this. I'm going to add them. So I'm going to keep an extra one. So 0 0.0516. I'm going to keep a third and mark that second just to remind myself. Plus... 0 0.0925, well that's three significant digits times six. So I should keep three, but I wanna do one extra since I'm doing another operation. So I'm gonna keep four, but mark that third one to remind myself. Okay, now I add them all together and I get 20.1796 AMU. Okay, well now we're doing addition. And remember, the rules for addition with significant digits are different than the rules for multiplication. So when you add, your answer can only be as precise as your least precise number again. But for adding, we determine that based off of which place has a significant digit in it. So this one is precise all the way out to the hundredths place. This number is precise all the way out to the thousandths place. And this number is precise all the way out to the hundredths place. So the least precise is out to hundredths. So my answer has to be rounded off to the hundredths place. So I would round that off, and that would give me 20.18 AMU. So this is the average atomic mass of neon. So again, this is an average of all three of these isotopes together. Now, does this answer make sense? Well, let's see, we know that most of it, over 90% of it had a mass of basically 20, and a little tiny bit of it was about 21, and a little tiny bit of it was 22. So it should be pretty close to 20, and it was. It came out to be 20.18. This number also doesn't match the value you see on your periodic table. Okay, let's try one more example. If silver is 51.84% silver 107 with a mass of 106.9051 atomic mass units, and the rest of it is silver 109 with a mass of 108.9048 atomic mass units. Calculate silver's atomic mass. Okay, so we have two different isotopes and they're not equal. So I need the abundance of silver 107 times the mass of silver 107 plus the abundance of silver 109 times the mass of silver 109. But in this case, they didn't give me a percentage for silver 109. They just told me that the rest of it was silver 109. Well, I know both of these isotopes have to add up to be 100%, of course. So this has to be the total. So if I subtract out the percentage that was silver 107, this was the silver 107, then I know the silver 109 has to be whatever is left. So the silver 109 is 48.16%. Okay, well, now we can just do our calculation with abundance times mass. So 51.84% as a decimal is written 0 0.5184 times the abundance of silver 107, which is 106.9051 AMU, plus the abundance of silver 109, which we just found was 48.16%, which written as a decimal is 0 0.4816 times the abundance of silver 109, which is 108.9048 AMU. So let's do this math. 
Okay, well four significant digits times seven should be four. But again, I know I'm gonna do another operation subsequent to this, so I wanna keep an extra one. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep a fifth and write 55.420. But I'm gonna mark the fourth to remind me it should really end there. Same thing here, four times seven. I should really have four. I'm gonna keep an extra one until I get to the end. So 52.449 AMU. I'm gonna mark that fourth. So I add these together and I get 107.869 atomic mass units. Okay, well how many significant digits should this number have? Well now we're adding, so this one was precise out to the hundredths place. This number was precise out to the hundredths place. So my answer has to be rounded off to the hundredths place. So I would get 107.87. And if you look on your periodic table, this is in fact the mass of silver. So this was an average of the silver 107 combined with the silver 109. Okay, so one more time. Now does this answer, 107.87 AMU, seem like a reasonable answer given the data we had? Well, if it was 50-50, 107 and 109, it would average out to be about 108. But it's not. It's 51.84% silver 107. So it should be a little bit on the 107 side of 108. And it is, it comes out to be 107.87. So this answer seems reasonable. Okay, well in our next video, I'm gonna work some more practice problems on calculating the average atomic mass of isotopes. I'm also gonna work a few variations where you'll be given the average atomic mass but have to solve for the mass of one of the individual isotopes or you may be given the masses and have to solve for the abundances of both of the isotopes. So join us back here next time at GetChemistryHealth.com. Thank you.